Снайпер! Контакт! Прикрой меня! Я должен перезарядиться! All right, folks. The Russian server only. SU-122V. Tier 10 special Russian tank destroyer. Practically their S-tank, except bigger caliber of a gun. 122mm. Means more alpha and module damage. More armor all the way around. 80mm instead of 40. And 60 for the sides and rear, compared to 30. Also more powerful engine, so more horsepower per ton ratio by 8. Compared to the S-Tank with a 4-man crew, so none of the combat roles or crew skills are merged into one person other than the commander. So less XP for more crew skills. All of that while weighing less than the actual S-Tank. How the hell? How the hell do you cram four people and the gun breach and ammunition and a more powerful engine into a smaller vehicle with better armor? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> it has 80 sloped at the hull front, therefore large caliber guns like the 155s or 152s cannot overmatch unless it's high explosive anti-tank rounds or something but <laughs> There are no space armor, so unlike the cage in the front, but it is a lot thicker. Twice as much armor at the front. Now, by this picture, there is a groove for the gun barrel right here. So what that means is, I think there's slight gun depression without moving into siege mode with the hydromatic suspension. So you can actually aim the gun a little bit, like with the UDES 03, or like with a lot of Stritzforden, in a sense, but... There are only three pictures, so that's all we have to go on. Let's take a look at the stats. So, this vehicle is S-Tank in shape, but just more sloping at the front. Yeah, a lot more sloping, like twice as much. It starts like right here for the S-Tank, but whatever. Not bad looking tank destroyer wise, I guess, but how the hell do you cram four people into this thing? <laughs> eh, I mean... It is pretty cramped. All the Russian vehicles are known for being cramped. Like your person is next to a ammunition rack, practically, or fuel drum, or fuel tank. But, nah. Uh, big caliber gun. I mean, it would be funny if this thing had like 130 or 152, but 122 is good enough, right? It should be good enough. Sniper gun. The only downside to this vehicle compared to the S tank is DPM and accuracy and shell velocity. It's an AP round, so DPM is not as high as the actual S-Tank. Accuracy is also not as good, but that is non-siege mode. So there is a siege mode, but you cannot see the actual stats while in siege mode. Hopefully the DPM stays the same. It's not a K-Panzer 07 HK situation, right? Where you get less DPM in siege mode. But four-man crew, dedicated loader, and gunner, so crew skills are not merged. Less XP, more crew skills. Also better camo, because four people are doing camouflage rather than three. Broken. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the 122. Yeah, 122. So DPM is 3000 base. It's still good, right? That's still good. Not 3300 as with the STRV, but good enough. Accuracy could be better, 0.35, 2.4 seconds of aim time, but this is non-siege mode. Don't know the actual siege mode. 10 degrees of gun depression, 24 elevation, so 24 is pretty good. That's like with the UDES 03 at tier 8. Now you cannot move the gun to the sides, 0 degrees traverse, traverse angles, alright. But reloads every 8.8 .8 seconds without a rammer. Penetration is 20 less than the APCR round, the 105, but you have more alpha by 50. Alright, that's like 10% more alpha or so. Alright, I mean the gun seems okay, but this is a close range combat S-Tank practically. AP round. Yeah, it's an AP round. Shell velocity is a lot slower than the APCR, definitely, but still. 1,240 is alright, that's fine enough for AP round, and you get better normalization too. High explosive anti-tank for gold shell, shell velocity 1,040, 
meters per second, but 340 millimeters of penetration. High explosive is high explosive, but yeah, high explosive is fine, whatever. But yeah, it, it fires AP round at a slower shell velocity with worse accuracy. Is that good for a combat S tank? <laughs> Threat engagement S tank, practically. Hmm. If you do play the S tank aggressively, this vehicle is probably for you. But let's take a look at the armor. Now, 50 more health than the actual S tank, but 80 millimeter compared to 40 at the hull front. It is sloped, so 76 degrees next to the gun barrel. 76. It is 80. Effectively, it's 250, but uh, 217. It should be auto bounce for a 120 millimeter gun. Let's see, 150 millimeter gun. It uh, should be auto bounce, but it's a larger area compared to the actual S tank. Let me just pull up the S tank in comparison. Armor. It's nice to have two servers or two clients open at the same time. I can actually compare stuff. So next to the gun barrel, sloping is 78 degrees with space armor, the cage, but next to the gun barrel, 76. So about two degrees less in terms of sloping, but still good enough, right? Should be still good enough. But yeah, this thing is also, yeah, let's use a 105. It should show the auto bounce zones. Yeah, auto bounce. Yeah, auto bounce, practically. All practically auto bounce, but. Eh. It's not a triangular shape, it's more like a trapezoid shape. Only the upper plate is sloped, whereas the lower plate is flat. So, much like the K Panzer 07HK that you got from Battle Pass. But it's still 80. I mean, it is still well sloped. There are a few areas next to the gun barrel. There are only 80 or so, or 50, but my shot trap into the nook right here. Commander Cupola is still a weak spot, but still small. And especially when you're hauled down and gun depressed, but... Eh, only 80 at the whole front. Lower play 80. Side armor is also 80 at the front end. And 60 for the back end. Technically, you could side scrape. And... The shielding covering the exhaust act as space armor. <laughs> what? There's a little strip of or triangular shape space armor covering the exhaust port. Exhaust vents. Okay. That should be exhaust, right? Yeah, that's exhaust. That is exhaust. Interesting. The armor still seems good, but you cannot overmatch the armor with large caliber guns now, right? Yeah, it's a weird trollish of armor. Auto bounce zones, practically. But if you're firing high explosive anti tank from something of a Yak Panzer's 170 millimeter with like 420 millimeters of penetration, yeah, you'll go through. <laughs> There's no cage to stop high explosive anti tank rounds. No. So, yeah, large caliber high explosive anti tank rounds will go through. Let's see, 155s. With like 350? 360? Yeah, it will still go through most of the time. But what about APCR round? Yeah, APCR round will bounce. High explosive anti tank. Yeah, it will likely go through. So that's the sloping trollishness of the S tanks, but. Eh, I mean, it's, uh, it's also. Compared this size with the same aspect ratio to the actual S tank. It's actually smaller <laughs> than the S-Tank, so I cannot zoom out on the Russian server. That is the size comparison, so... Yeah, it's actually smaller than the S-Tank, okay? <laughs> now, horsepower per ratio is 26 compared to 18 on the S-Tank, while weighing less by like 8 tons. Top speed is only 2 km per hour t less, so definitely I'll trade. 2 kilometers per hour for 8 more horsepower per ratio. Also, turning into siege mode is only 1 second. 
compared to two seconds. That is not fair. <laughs> See, horsepower per turn ratio is eight more. So at the cost of two kilometer per hour top speed, but reverse wise, not as fast. You cannot go backwards as fast. You must face forward, comrade. Also, traverse is not as good, but yeah, turning into siege mode and turning out of siege mode is dramatically faster. So this thing is combat S tank. This thing is frontline S tank and it weighs less by eight tons or so. All right. Always forward, comrade. This thing has better camo by 1% compared to the S tank. And V range is the same. So, that is uh, that is pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty broken. Now, what is interesting is the four man crew shows up right here. So, this is the main camo 24% compared to 23. But if we copy for comparison, and if we train all camouflage for the four man crew you'll see the difference so let's train the crew for camouflage only three man crew on the s tank so in comparison with the camouflage trained so it went up by about say almost 20 or so right 20 but the difference is only about 18 on the s tank so you see the difference so that is kind of dramatic. It's 1% difference between the non-camo version, whereas with the camo version, it's about 2% difference. So one more person means better camo with four people training the camouflage skill. So also less XP because you don't have to switch your crew skills around or jumble them around like with the actual S tank. The commander is also the gunner. The driver is also the gunner. And the radio operator is also the loader, so yeah, not as much crew skills for more XP. It's already a six-man crew. I don't even have snapshot or uh, uh, smooth driving or smooth driving accuracy thing. I don't even have that, so yeah, crew skills, kind of important, but this thing is pretty weird. So let's kit this vehicle out. Let's see how the full specs with the equipments go. So, let me turn on. You will probably want Rammer. Rammer is an obvious must. It's a combat S tank. I feel maybe Turbocharger will be pretty good. You don't need the camouflage nets or the binoculars. These are you're not you're not camping in the back with the accuracy with the slower show velocity. It's more beneficial for you to be aggressive with this vehicle. So none of the Camping aspects with the binoculars and camouflage in it. I would say turbocharger and finally maybe Optics Maybe vents This is a toss-up. I say optics optics is more important than vents So it's more like a freaking medium tank play style uh, It's kind of weird like with the Kampf Panzer K Panzer project 07 HK yeah, this thing is more DPM without going into siege mode. You get less DPM in siege mode. So I got rammer, optics, and vents on this thing. But yeah, this thing could also move the gun slightly. Not really, I don't remember. I didn't like it as much as the actual S tanks. <laughs> Mostly because the penetration alpha is not as good. But it has more DPM. Not in siege mode though, so this is more aggressive, what I feel, but it still has the little lip right here for the commander as a weak spot, but yeah, this thing is a lot more aggressive than the actual S tank. Rammer, optics, turbocharger or vents, one of which, but field mods, practically the same as with the S tank, so better terrain resistance, better track tension too, or track, uh, track module health. So, at the cost of on paper hull traverse, but effectively you have better traverse. Accuracy or aim time? Definitely accuracy. Aim time is already okay. I mean, without going into siege mode, I guess, but yeah. Uh, I mean, this thing might have better accuracy in siege mode. So, I would say better accuracy. Uh, shots after firing camo. Or camo after shots fired. Yeah, useless. <laughs> it's 4.3%. It goes up to 4.5. That's nothing. That's 
garbage. You get better view range, always better view range. Rammer or DPM or accuracy. You don't get that much DPM. Only only 100 more. I would say better accuracy. Yeah, by 0.01. I would say better accuracy at the cost of 100 DPM. DPM is good enough. Better accuracy. And engine power or aim speed. I say engine power. Aim speed is only 0.07, which is not much. But with the engine power, or 0.08, but engine power goes up by almost, by more than one horsepower tone ratio. Yeah, definitely more engine power. <laughs> so fully kit this thing out. We can also use optics as a buff, but full stats wise, holy crap. I mean, DPM is 3,200, so almost close to the base of the, <laughs> without rammer, STRVs. Uh, but yeah, engine power is 28.9 with camo. This thing has, <laughs> this thing has camo. <laughs> and it goes into siege mode fast, goes out of siege mode fast. And with a decent enough view range too. I mean, I saw people playing really aggressive with the S tank. I don't do that much. I don't. I rarely do aggressive playstyle with the S tank because it has no health and no armor. High caliber guns will overmatch, and you'll have a bad time. But holy crap, this thing seems good. Seems real good. But hmm. I mean, this is a this is a pretty good vehicle for stuff like onslaught. Or just normal pub matches, but oh, uh, the only downside to this vehicle is obviously large caliber guns will overmatch the armor, definitely. But holy crap, holy huh? How much would I rate this thing? Jesus, <laughs> it has everything better except for the shell velocity, the accuracy, and DPM of an S tank. Better camo, better armor. Better mobility in terms of horsepower per tone ratio. More module damage, more alpha. And four man crew is nothing to be scoffed at. Definitely less XP for more crew skill. That is a big plus. This is at least 8 <laughs> or something. I think 8.5. Holy crap, why is the Russian server always have broken vehicles? Like 9 out of 10s or 8.5 out of 10s? It's good. I feel it's good. You can also snipe with this thing. You don't have to play aggressively. With that horsepower patrol ratio, with that camo, you can run towards sniping position, going into siege mode pretty quick, and just basically just turn a 180 degree and run about. But yeah, you cannot go backwards as fast. So always forward, comrades. <laughs> always forward. You cannot go backwards, comrade. Um, Yeah, 8.5. At least 8 out of 10. Well, there you go, folks. Russian server only. I'm waiting on the common test for 1.24 to see the TT-130M, the AAT-60, as well as the Nemesis, hopefully. But for now, I'll poke around the Russian server and have fun. But now we'll take a look at the combat artillery coming up next in the premium tier 8s. But as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.